few know how the U.S. Navy SEALs became the well-known and feared warriors they are today. From the beaches of Normandy to the jungles of Vietnam, their actions have had a direct impact on history. The years after their formal designation would be filled with both combat and non-combat accomplishments that make up their legacy. Starting in the late 1950s, underwater demolition men, known as UDTs, set the foundation for the leapfrogs. In 1964, the concept of a small demonstration team was approved. Then, in 1969, under the leadership of Lieutenant Scotty Lyon, the Navy Parachute Team was officially designated by the Navy Recruiting Command. The Leapfrogs are made up of 15 highly trained team members who volunteer for a three-year tour. Some say the SEALs have no boundaries. They operate at sea, in the air, on land, and even in space. NASA relied heavily on UDT operators to assist with astronaut survival and recovery in the late 1950s. In 1969, Frogman performed a miraculous recovery in front of an international television audience of 500 million when the Apollo 11 Command Module Columbia capsized on landing in the Pacific Ocean. The men recovered the astronauts within several minutes. While SEALs succeeded in non-combat operations, the threat of communism grew around the world. Frogmen were called on to fight once more. In January 1962, SEAL Team 1 deployed to South Vietnam to train local forces in the tactics and techniques of maritime commandos during the fight against the communist Viet Cong guerrillas. By mid-1968, SEALs began carrying out day and night ambushes, hit-and-run raids, reconnaissance patrols, and special intelligence collections operations. During the war, SEALs gained a reputation as fearsome and extraordinary warriors. They were known as the Men with Green Faces. In 1983, tensions between the U.S. and the island nation of Grenada boiled over. The U.S. launched an invasion with two goals in mind. Take U.S. citizens off the island and overthrow the communist government. But tragedy struck before the invasion even started. During the airborne insertion, four SEALs drowned off the island's coast due to low visibility and high waves. Their bodies were never recovered. During the assault, SEALs successfully extracted Granada's Governor General, Sir Paul Schoon, and captured Granada's only radio tower. Even though Operation Urgent Fury was a success, the operation was an example of poor joint preparedness due to inter-service rivalry. This led to the Goldwater-Nichols Department of Defense Reorganization Act of October 4, 1986. The act would have its first successful test during Operation Just Cause in Panama. On the night of December 19, 1989, the U.S. invaded Panama to execute an arrest warrant against Panamanian leader Manuel Noriega, a former ally of the U.S., on charges of drug trafficking. SEALs infiltrated the southern end of an airfield at night to dispose of Noriega's Learjet. Then the firefight began. During the initial volley, eight of the nine SEALs were wounded. Several other SEALs were killed across the airfield. Chief Engineman Don McFall realized his comrades were exposed and pulled wounded teammates to safety. In the ultimate sacrifice, he laid himself across the teammate to protect him and was killed. McFall was awarded the Navy Cross and USS McFall, an Arleigh Burke class destroyer, was named in his honor. As the threat of communism slowly faltered, a new enemy was coming to light, Al-Qaeda. Once again, America would call on these elite commanders 